Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called New Corp Order. New Corp Order is for one to four players, and it plays about 30 minutes for ages 12 and up. In the game New Corp Order, you're going to be playing as con uh, corporations, and it tells you exactly how it plays. It's kind of cool. With the influence of guilty governments fading away, mega corpses start to control the world, but they're cautious in this new brave world of hyper-connected citizens, where the mistakes of the past, media conglomerates hold the key to planetary domination. As the topic executive of one of the world's leading mega corporations, your task is to improve the public image of your company through the wise manipulation of the four biggest media conglomerates. Infiltrate their structures and use the influence to your advantage, even if that means playing one conglomerate against the other. After all, the prize is big. The world. And you're going to be choosing along with... Um, Basically, your cards you would start in your hand, uh, different colors to allow you to manipulate the board. You're also going to be getting certain types of characters, like corporate lawyers, or insiders, or deal makers, military contractors, and so on and so forth. Your objective is to start placing your influence throughout these different locations on the tiles. And at the end of the game, you're going to see who has the most control or influence in all the different sectors, and then you're going to get points based on how your control works. Alright, that's the basic idea of the game. Let's go ahead and show you what your company looks like. So here we have the contents for New Corp Order, and we're going to talk about all of them, including the box here. You're going to be getting conglomerate cards, a full deck here. You're going to deal out five, no matter how many players, and you're also going to put out a grid. This is set up for three players, so it's a four by four board. You're also going to be giving every single player secret objective cards, and this is the extra ones that are over here. You're going to take two of them and deal them out to each player, and these are going to be remain hidden. Players are going to be able to choose to keep these or not, and re-deal them out as they so choose. They can choose to keep one or two, or however they want to do that. Every player is also also going to get conglomerate cards. They're starting with five, and they're just basically going to have colors on them: green, blue, uh, yellow, and red. And everybody's going to get five of those. You're also going to go ahead and deal out these guys over here, and it's going to be based on number of players: x minus one, x being the number of players. So in a three-player game, there's going to be two of each of these in the uh, pile over here. You're going to go ahead and take these and shuffle them up, and then deal them out to each player, and they'll be hidden, remain uh, visible, so players can see. The extra one, I assume, is actually just going to go back to the pool here, but I'm not exactly sure if that's how that works. Uh, you're also going to be getting influence cubes to use throughout the game, and that will be placed on the board to show whoever has the most influence cards. And to begin, you're also going to take four of each of the different types of colored cubes, shuffle them up, and then deal one down in each of the different locations. So I'm making sure that the entire board has at least one influence on it to uh, start the game off. As you can see, each of the different tiles here is going to represent a different uh, corporation here. Uh, print media, online marketing, social media, so on and so forth, as well abilities over here. Once everybody's got their hand of five, their two special abilities, or none if they choose not to use them, their specific card here for uh, basically, uh, I guess, an employee, deal makers, military contracts, corporate lawyers, so on and so forth, you'll be using these. Also in a two-player game, you're going to take out certain cards, which I believe is uh, corporate lawyers, but I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And make sure that you've got your deck of cards here along with your face-up cards. There's five to be chosen from, and I believe that's pretty much it. You're going to get a rule book as well, but that is how you, what you're going to do to set up the game and what's going to become included in New Corp Order. In New Corp Order, when it's your turn, you'll be able to choose one of three different actions. The first action is going to be to plot, and that'll be to allow you to draw two cards, either from the deck or from the tableau of five cards that are on the board. After you've done that, you're going to replace the cards you have drawn if it's from the board, and if it's from the deck, you just go ahead and keep that in your hand. Another thing you can do is infiltrate, which is placing one color of cards from your hand onto your tableau. It can be all of the same, it has to be all the same color, but it can be any number that you choose. You can also choose to use specific cards, like maybe military a contract that will allow you to play two different colors, or even something more like um, the corporate lawyer, which says when you uh, when you infiltrate, you can place uh, two uh, conglomerates instead of one. So there's all these different cards you can choose to play as well. But in general, when you're infiltrating, you're just playing one of any color, uh, as many cards as you lock in front of your tableau, and it's going to be face up. The other thing you can do is take over, and by doing that, you need to tap the cards, turn the cards sideways in front of you in your tableau, as many as you need to, to then take over an adjacent colored uh, territory. So for instance, if you've got uh, three cubes in, let's say, print media, and there is guerrilla marketing that has two cubes, you'll need to turn over um, uh, you'll need to turn over more than the number it required. So th if you have three, you can go ahead and take another spot over that has two. However, you have to leave at least one cube on your location. So in that case, it'd only be two and two, which means you couldn't. But a four and a two would be okay, because you could take three of them, which would beat, beat off the two. So three would beat the two. And moving those three would destroy these guys, leaving one to your board. And then you'd be able to use the action of the space, as well as keeping one of the colored cubes as your own for basically victory points at the end of the game. Each space 
base has its own unique action, which you can go ahead and take as well when you're infiltrating, or when you're when you're taking over certain locations, which can benefit you as well. Your objective is to acquire the most type of colored cards in your tableau than anybody else, because that is going to be the locations you'll be scoring at the end of the game. You're also going to be scoring points based on how you went ahead and took over different spaces. The more cubes you have at the end as well is going to benefit you. Your objective, of course, is to get the most points at the end of the game, have the most influence in the specific different locations, because just because you have a lot of, uh, the, you've been placing a lot of cubes, that does not matter. You need to have the cards in front of you. If you have five blue cards and your opponent has only four, the five blue cards are going to make the difference, but you can also include the cubes of which you went ahead and used to take over, which can give you bonuses as well to make you secure the influence in those specific locations. That might sound a little confusing, but I'm going to show you on the board to show you how easy it is to understand. Back to the board now, as you can see, I went ahead and shown you all the different players' hands, as well as showed you their specific objectives. This guy's trying to get print media. He can gain bonus points for having print media, and these are the different symbols regarding that. He needs broadcasting networks, and he also needs social media, and it shows you these symbols. It'll also tell you that, and guerrilla marketing and ambient advertising. He's looking for those. The cards in your hand are going to represent colored cubes, which you'll be using, and like I said, you got three different things you can do on your turn. The first one being plot. You can take two cards from here or draw two cards from here. When you draw a card, you have to draw another one, and then you're going to replace it. However, you can only have six cards in your hand, so at this point, you're probably going to want to do your second action, which is going to be to infiltrate. Infiltrate. Infiltrating means you're going to play any cards that you want from your hand as long as it's the same color out on your tableau. And so this guy here has three green, so three green is probably what he wants to play. That's going to go onto his tableau. This is his hand. He's going to take three of the green cubes from the pool here and place them anywhere on the board that also has green cubes. Whenever you place three or more cubes out onto the board, for instance, if I put three here, uh, then you're going to also get one of these guys here. You can choose from the pool and you can have multiples of these things here to use periodically. The insiders specifically says whenever you infiltrate this turn, uh, one of the cards you place may have a different color. So if he had that card, he could have also chosen to play this one here, which would have been nice. Um, but he didn't, so that's okay. After he's gone ahead and chosen to do this action, the next player is going to get to go and take their turn. Remember, he also wants to put him on these spaces here, so putting it over here is not going to be so helpful. Whereas, let's see if he has one on the board that's actually green. Uh, there isn't one, so he made a good choice then. So the next player, he's probably also going to infiltrate as well. He happens to have three yellows, so playing three yellows on the board is not going to be a bad idea. And taking three yellow cubes, and once again, placing them on the board somewhere. He's looking for these two locations here. Let's see if he can find one. This is a good location right here because it represents this one here for extra bonus points if he can manage to control it. And then, of course, the next player is going to get a chance to go, and he has three blue, also very helpful, placing three blue on the board and taking these three, he's going to want print media, and is there blue for print media? Uh, one, two, three, four, none of these guys have it, so he'll just go ahead and select the location of his choosing. Okay, so everybody's gone ahead and done that. You don't get to refresh the cards in your hand because the next round of play, this player is going to get to do the plot, and he is going to want to select cards. They're going to be the same color of the cards he has here, but he also wants to make sure he has the most. Everybody has the most of their certain color. He has the most green, yellow, and blue, so if at the end of the game happened just now, he would control all the green points, he would control the yellow, and he would control all the blue. So he's simply going to go ahead and do the plot. He'll take a yellow card here, and he'll draw he'll draw a card first and then he'll take a yellow card here and then afterwards this is going to go refreshed so he's got two yellows which is not too bad and then the next player will go ahead and look at their hand and see what they want to do they've got let's go for the two red here so he can have three red on his next turn boop and boop and uh, this player is next. Now, uh, if he wants to, let's say he wants to take the other action instead. This is takeover. To take over something, all you need to do is turn the card sideways in front of you. Uh, this, uh, he has three of them here, and so if he wanted to go here to here and take over that red, he's gonna need to spend at least one more than there is total cubes here. So he could spend two, take two cubes from here, making sure there's at least one left over here, and place it here. This red is going to then score for him. If there's two red, one would go to the pool, and one would go to him, which he'll be using later on in the game. And then he'd place that here, uh, place these guys here. After that, he's now controlled this area, or at least blue has controlled this area, and this ability is now going to be um, partaken. So this one says here, I think it says untap two uh, cards of your choice, which is nice. There's other ones that do different things, like this one allows you to move two cubes from one location to another, so he can move two cubes from one location to another. This one makes you uh, lose a card. Uh, this one here lets you swap location, or this one swaps locations, this one swaps different cards, so you can do this. 
Uh, and there's tons of other ones that do different things. You can tap your opponent's cards, so on and so forth. After that is done, the next round of play is going to begin. People are going to continue to draw cards and place out cubes and until eventually the end of the game is going to occur. And the game is going to end when this entire deck runs out. We'll go ahead and place a couple cubes randomly on the board. Another way that the game can end too is if uh, multiple uh, different locations have more than enough cubes on them. I think it's seven for three, uh, it's something like that. But if there's a total a number of cubes on certain locations, that can end the game as well. We're just gonna move this on into the future a little bit to make it a little easier. And then I'm also going to randomly distribute some cards to players, so that way you can see what scoring is going to look like. We don't really need to have their hands anymore, so we'll move these away and give people a good idea of what it would look like in end of game. Of course, there's gonna be a lot more cards um, at the end of a game, but just for example, I think it'd be best to do it this way. And of course, they'll also be having, you'll have some tap cards. Okay, so we'll just look at it like that, right? Um, and also players will have some of these cubes as well for collecting, uh, infiltrating different territory, for uh, going and uh, taking over certain territories. So now let's talk about the end of the game. Okay, so let's talk about how scoring works in the game. Now, first of all, you're going to need to try and have the most of a certain color. This is his tableau, his and uh, his or hers. Uh, so first we'll look at green. He's got two, he's got two, he's got three, which means he is going to control green. And uh, second place is actually going to control green, but just slightly less. Uh, in this case, though, green would mean he's going to get two points for each of the locations uh, that green is controlled. And so you can score a ton of points that way. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and look at yellow. He's got three yellow one so he would control yellow and he would score points based on the yellow on the board and blue would be the same thing you'd also look at these guys here if you have these at the end of the game you start with two if you have two then three then four you're going to score one three and uh one one two and three points and so you're going to get well you're going to get more points the more you have individually of these guys here you're also going to score two points for each of the locations you control with the colors on them so if he controlled green and green happened to control let's say controlled this location here here. Because it's this type, he would also score additional points that way. And those are the main aspects of how scoring works in the game. Whoever has the most total points scored up at the end of the game is going to be the winner of the game, New Corp Order. Let me go ahead and tell you a couple caveats regarding what these guys can do, along with what I think about the game. Okay, so a couple caveats first. I messed up a little bit, I gotta concede on that. Uh, normally, the, cu oh, the cubes are gonna be worth two points as far as uh, influence in color. So in that case, the green would have actually been tied because two cube, uh, one cube, and one card is three, and three cards is simply three points. So remember that cubes are worth two and cards are worth only one. Not only that, but let's go ahead and talk about the different types of cards in the game you can get to use. Whenever you place down three uh, pieces of influence on a certain location, you get stuff like the Military Contractor, which allow you to take, whenever you take over this turn, you only need to match the same number. So if one location had three and one location had two, you could actually move those two from the three over to the two and beat that location out. You could also use the Deal Maker, which allows you to, after taking over, draw two cards from the deck, which kind of will let you draw even when you need cards, but you still want to take over to control the game. You've got the Insider, which allows you to infiltrate one additional uh, color, which is nice, as well as the Corporate Lawyer, which allows you to place two different types of conglomerates, uh, but it's not usable in the two-player game, only the three and the four-player version of the game. Uh, and that's the basic idea. The ending of the game is going to be when the entire deck runs out, or when a certain number of cubes hits the board, and you're going to play, and then you're going to score points based on who has the most locations, uh, is where you're going to tell where you're going to score, and then how much is based on um, the different locations that are earned, as well as the bonus little cards here. So what do I think about the game? Well, first off, the game has some really remarkable aspects. I love the hidden cards. I like the tableau management. It reminds me kind of like a Villages of Valeria style ticket to ride feel. It's got that corporate feel as well. The art works for me very well. I really enjoy that. And I like the secretive nature about what cards you're going to be wanting to place on. Most of your opponents have an idea of what you're going for, based on the cards that are in front of you in your tableau, but they don't know your secret objectives, and they don't know where you, how you're going to use your cards. Now, what I must say is this is a deeply, deeply strategic game. In general, it's pretty simple. There's three types of things you can do. You can go ahead and plot, infiltrate, or simply to take over another location. But you can accidentally take over locations for an opponent. If you only have four blue cards, and some or four blue points worth of cards, uh, and somebody else has like ten, you could use blue to infiltrate something else. However, you're not going to score points or blue at the end of the game 
and you don't have as many points as on your opponent. So you have to be very careful in that regard. You also have to make sure that you check and see all the different abilities on the cards, because that makes a big difference as well. Moving cubes around, switching cards over, untapping, tapping cards is going to benefit you, as well as uh, the other actions on the board. The corporate lawyers and all of them have their own unique aspects. I personally like the deal maker my, myself as my favorite. Military contractor is pretty cool as well, but they all have their own unique role, and I have found myself using them all throughout the entire game. If you like a lot of deep strategy, if you like a lot of thinking with a game that is a very simple idea, and there's basically three options you can do, but each option has some severe consequences or severe benefits based on how you choose throughout the game, you're going to enjoy this game. It gets bigger based on the number of players and small, bigger with larger players and smaller with other with uh, less players, and it really, really works. You get a lot of cards in your tableau, uh, so you might, some people didn't like that. Ferdinand, they didn't enjoy the fact that I think the tableau had a huge amount of cards to deal with, but really if you just go ahead and stack them and put them all in their, their own unique category, simply like Magic the Gathering does with their lands, I think it's not going to be very difficult for you, any of you Magic players or people who are used to using cards as currency, you'll find that this is not a very difficult process in my opinion. And uh, overall, it's really, really fun. Uh, my, my cameraman slash editor gave this game I think an 8.5 out of 10, I don't usually do a 10 scale, but he really, really enjoyed this game, so I figured I'd let you know that. And for me personally, I had a lot of fun. If you like in-depth decision-making games with not a huge amount of different like things you have to think about really, as far as like the three different choices, but then you get into the real de details, you're gonna enjoy this, as well as the fact that the more you play the game, the better you're gonna get, and the more you're gonna see what choices are the best for you, and even the more players you have, the more nasty the game is going to get. I think for some people though, there might be some analysis paralysis, and I also think it might bog some people down based on not knowing exactly where to infiltrate. You can mess over somebody else who's in first place and switch it with second on accident, and that could drive a player nuts because you maybe you're in last place and you're still learning how to play the game. There is a big learning curve to this game. But overall, New Corp Order is definitely a very, very fun game. I definitely suggest you check out the Kickstarter in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help, as well as checking out New Corp Order on Kickstarter. If you're interested, go ahead and click on that link down below there. Let me know what you guys think of the game, if this is something you'd like to play in the comment section below, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. we got tons of blog posts, giveaways, text lists, and more, as well as we're currently giving away a game from AEG called Space Space. Really cool game. I definitely suggest you go ahead and do that as well simple and easy to enter. You can also check out our friends everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They give away tons and tons of games and they have some reviews and blog posts as well. It's almost as cool as my own stuff. All right guys, well that's all I got for this time and as always you guys have a great day and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.